The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus and his disciples came to the other side of the sea, to the territory of the Gerasenes. When he got out of the boat, at once a man from the tombs who had an unclean spirit met him. The man had been dwelling among, among the tombs, and no one could restrain him any longer, even with a chain. In fact, he had frequently been bound with shackles and chains, but the chains had been pulled apart by him, and the shackles smashed, and no one was strong enough to subdue him. Night and day among the tombs and on the hillsides, he was always crying out and bruising himself with stones. Catching sight of Jesus from a distance, he ran up and prostrated him before him, himself before him, crying out in a loud voice, What have you to do with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I adjure you by God, do not torment me. He had been saying to him, Unclean spirit, come out of the man. He asked him, what is your name? He replied, Legion is my name. There are many of us. And he pleaded earnestly with him not to drive them away from that territory. Now a large head of swine was feeding there on the hillside, and they pleaded with him, Send us to the swine, into the swine, let us enter them. And he led them and the unclean spirits came out and entered the swine. The herd of about 2,000 rushed down a steep bank into the sea, where they were drowned. The swine herds ran away and reported the incident in the town and throughout the countryside, and people came out to see what had happened. As they approached Jesus, they caught sight of the man who had been possessed by legion, sitting there clothed and in his right mind, and they were seized with fear. Those who witnessed the incident explained to them what had happened to the possessed man and to the swine. Then they began to beg him to leave their district. As he was getting into the boat, the man who had been possessed pleaded to remain with him. But Jesus would not permit him, but told him instead, Go home to your family and announce to them all that the Lord in his pity has done for you. Then the man went off and began to proclaim in the Decapolis what Jesus had done for him, and all were amazed. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Good morning, brothers and sisters, everyone who was here. Buenos dias, because we have a Spanish visitor. Uh, so to our online parishioners, I might speak a bit of Spanish. Welcome, welcome to our parish, Father Ignacio, Ignacio of Cartagena. I was pronouncing it earlier, oh, Father Ignacio, welcome. But he corrected me and he said, Ignacio, Father. <laughs> so, welcome, Father. Uh, and his brother, Javier, is also with us. So, from the bishops, now we go to Spain. <laughs> So we are truly global. And we do categorize people according to differences. In terms of gender, we categorize people to male or female or whatnot. We categorize people according to race and ethnicity. Father Ignacio is Spanish from Cartagena, Spain. And I am, of course, pure Filipino. We categorize people 
uh, in terms of being local or foreigner, alien. We categorize people as different from us or similar to us. This is what happened in the gospel today. Jesus goes to a Gerasene territory, definitely a territory that is enemy to the Jews. It's a Gentile territory. Why? Because there are pigs. For the Jews, pigs are not supposed to be you know, mingling. You, have, you don't have anything to do with swine or pigs. So definitely the Gerasene territory is a territory of aliens and strangers and yes, enemies. But you see the behavior of Jesus. He goes to the other side of the sea. He goes to the side of the enemy. He goes to the territory of the alien and stranger to his culture of the Jews. He goes to them. He does not categorize people in terms of in-group or out-group. He categorizes everyone as the serving of the gospel, of the proclamation of the good news. It is natural for people to categorize people in terms of those who are our friends, our enemies, those who belong to our circle, those who are outside of it. Sometimes we can be very exclusive, but the Lord is the Lord of inclusion. He goes out to an alien territory, reaches out to them, teaching us a thing or two about acceptance, respect of differences, of accepting one another. The tendency of people when we categorize is we favor the in-group, we derogate the out-group. We have what we call an in-group bias. If this belongs to me, if this belongs to my tribe, then I am friends with them. If they are outside of it, then I have nothing to do with them or I consider them as my enemy. From categorization, a lot of times we go to demonization of the other. We demonize the other, we dehumanize the other because we say he is different from us or she is not among us, she is not with us. What happened in the Gerasene territory was this man who was being possessed by legion, hundreds of them possessing this man. And he is being isolated because of his situation and his illness. He is dwelling among the tombs. He is not part of the community. He lives among the dead. No one can get near him. And he is being restrained by a chain, by shackles and chains. And what did Jesus do? He reaches out to the man possessed by legion, to the man who is considered dead, impure. Jesus goes out to him. Have a conversation with him. Jesus had a conversation with a person considered by many as dead. He does not dehumanize or demonize the dead. He looks at him and treats him with compassion. He talks to him. If you don't consider a person as a person, you don't talk to them. But kita kakausapin. Hindi tayo kauri. Ba't kita kakausapin? Kaibigan mo ba ako? Kilala ba kita? Sa maraming beses ho sa atin, hindi lang ho tayo isnabero. Meron din ho tayong tendency na, sino ka ba? Sinusukat natin ng mga tao ayon sa kauri ba siya o hindi? Kaaway ba siya o kaibigan? At madalas sa hindi, ang pagturing natin sa iba 
ay ang pagmamaliit at panghahamak sa kapwa. Kasi, yun, si Raulo yan eh. Eh kasi, mahirap yan eh. Eh kasi, ganito yan eh. Meron tayong mga ganong pag-uugali na ang tingin natin sa hindi natin kauri ay kaaway. At hindi lang basta kaaway, sila din ay masamang tao, tayo ay mabuting tao. When we dehumanize people and demonize people, we do not acknowledge their personhood, their dignity as human beings. What did Jesus do to this man who was possessed by legion? He goes to him, he talks to him, has a conversation with him, he brings him to life, healing him from his sickness and restoring him to the community. And I think this is an example that many of us today have to learn from Jesus to lessen our tendency to be judgmental of an alien, a foreigner, someone different. We have to learn from Jesus' inclusive mentality. We have to learn from Jesus who reaches out to someone who is considered impure and dirty and dead, excluded from society, outcast from the community. But the Lord always makes it a point to teach us a thing or two about love of neighbor. Who is my neighbor? Everyone, especially the one who is not similar to me. Nakakalungkot po, naikwento ko to kahapon, di po ba, yung nangyari kay Jollibee um, Ranara, yung OFW na nagtrabaho sa Kuwait. Ang hirap po nang nagtatrabaho sa ibang bansa kasi aside from racism, nandyan din yung discrimination at nandyan din yung violence and aggression towards our, you know, our OFWs. Akalung ko ito nangyari sa kanya kasi you know, meron siyang apat na anak nagpunta ng ibang bansa para magtrabaho, tulungan ng kanyang pamilya, pero anong ginawa sa kanya? Binaon sa disyerto raped, tortured to death. Akalungkot. Dahil hindi lang naman ito ngayon nangyari, maraming beses, paulit-ulit ho nangyayari ito, na yung pagtrato sa ating mga OFW, mga kapatid na kapwa Pilipino, ay walang pagkapahalaga sa dignidad at paggalang sa dignidad at dangal bilang tao. Our tendency most of the time, not just those who are being maltreated outside of the country, but even here among us, the way we treat each other, we always categorize people according to whether they are of us or against us. We categorize people and too often the tendency is because they're different from us, we don't consider them as, you know, belonging to us and so we dehumanize them. We maltreat them. We demonize them. They are not worthy of respect. And the worst of all, we desacralize them. Three evil things that we do. We dehumanize people. We demonize people. We desacralize people. When we desacralize people, we don't see the image of God in them anymore. We don't see the sanctity of the human life in them anymore. Eh, addict yan eh. Okay lang, patayin mo na. Hindi na tao yan eh. Okay lang, nabarilin nyo na. Violence around us. Extrajudicial killings around us. This has no place in supposedly a Christian society, but they happen all the time. And our gospel today reminds us very strongly of Jesus inclusive behavior and attitude towards those who are outside of his circle. He intentionally visited the Gerasene territory to show to his disciples that everyone is welcome. All are welcome. Everyone is a child of God. Everyone deserves respect. 
everyone deserves to be loved and cared for. So in this Mass, we pray for that spirit of inclusion, of inclusivity, the spirit of openness and welcome and hospitality. We are known for that as Filipinos, but more often than not, we are more hospitable to foreigners than we are to ourselves, to our family members, to our friends, to those who are not similar to us. So in, we pray in this Mass for the spirit of inclusivity to reign in our communities, in our hearts and families. Like Jesus, let us open our hearts to the stranger, to the neighbor, and yes, to the enemy. Love thy neighbor. Love your enemy. Pray for those who persecute you. For Jesus, everyone is welcome. Amen. Once again, dear friends, thank you very much for your patience that you have stayed with us. Uh, our schedule was quite disrupted because we accommodated and hosted our bishops who were here. Uh, so they're ending their assembly today. And so I thank you for praying for them. And let us also continue to pray for our Filipino bishops that they may lead us as good shepherds. So maraming salamat for tomorrow. We are back to our regular schedule, uh, our rosary at 6.30 and our mass at 7 o'clock. So babalik po tayo sa ating uh, schedule ulit. Pero after po ng mass kanina ng mga bishops, may isang bishop po na lumapit sa akin. Ang sabi sa akin ay, Father, ang ganda ng simbahan mo. Sabi ko, Bishop, hindi, hindi ko po simbahan po yan. <laughs> Oo. Oo. Pwede ba akong mag-misa bukas? <laughs> Abi ko, oh, sure, sure, Bishop. So I told him, yes, uh, we have another Bishop who will celebrate the Mass tomorrow with us before they finally leave. Uh, but that's at 7 o'clock also. So, maraming salamat sa inyo. And of course, we welcome Father Ignacio. <laughs> Ignacio, Ignacio. <laughs> yeah, welcome, Father. He'll be staying for another three weeks. Three weeks. Uh, he'll come over to concelebrate and even say Mass from time to time, Father. So, those who are interested to show him around the country, yeah, feel free to approach him later. He wants to see the Philippines. So, <laughs> maybe you would like to volunteer to help his brother, Javier, to tour him around Manila. They're interested in going around Manila. May volunteer ba dyan na gustong mag -ano kay Father? <laughs> Walking tour of Manila. Yeah. So, again, thank you. Welcome, Father Ignacio, to our church in Santa Maria Goretti. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may our loving God bless you and your family, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass has been offered. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.